Hey guys, Dragon Ball for Life here today and I'm back with another video. Now today's video I'm going to be power scaling Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Now when I say power scaling, I don't mean I'm going to be talking about how powerful they are like in Chuck's video. I'm going to actually be talking about the power scaling uh, statements and feats that I did not agree with and I want to go into why I don't agree with it. Now let's first start off with the recording of uh, you know, Trunks killing Frieza and uh, his dad King Cold. Now, I have a big problem with this because in the movie they show a recording of it from I think uh, I don't remember. I think it was uh, Hero's Spybot. I could be wrong. I think it was from Magenta or one of them. But they were showing a video of Trunks killing Frieza and his dad on recording, and we see literally Trunks moving in and stuff, which doesn't make sense because these characters move ridiculously fast. And at this point, they should be moving faster than the speed of light. So how the hell was the camera or a spy bot able to capture their movements? Even though we want to say they probably had highly advanced cameras and technology and stuff, there's no way any technology should be able to track their movements. Even the fastest, you know, tracking cameras can track light, but not to that extent or that casually. We were able to see it. So I do not like that they had a video recording of their fight, even though he would be moving with a ridiculous amount of speed. So that was a little bit of a problem I had, but then we have a little bit more later on. And the bigger one we have is Gamma 1 and 2 in their power sets. Now a lot of people stated that Gamma 1 and 2 are stronger than Goku and Vegeta, at least from the Tournament of Power uh, sense. And uh, the reason they say that is because I think it was stated by Piccolo that they were stronger than uh, you know them or they, they would be too much of a challenge for even them or take out the Z Fighters or whatever, something like that. But I disagree with this because from what we've seen from Gamma 1 and 2, they didn't show that level of power. Because of Gamma 1, uh, Gamma 2 was that powerful. When he first fought uh, Piccolo, he should have been able to easily obliterate him because Piccolo was nowhere near, you know, Goku and Vegeta's power at all. So he should have been casually able to beat him. He was going there to kill him. And though Piccolo did trick him by, you know, making him think that his blast hit him and getting out the smoke, he should have been able to kill him with a couple of punches. Uh, alone without even needing to fire a blast from the gun. So that kind of disproves it. I also want to talk about their gun shooting at this energy attack. I do think it's kind of dumb to have a gun being powerful enough to damage these guys. Even the weaker characters like Gohan and uh, you know Piccolo should still be significantly powerful enough to handle it. And the only thing I can give it a kind of a free pass or the reasoning why that's the case is it's possibly these guns are made from the same material that made these guys because these guys are androids and they were made to handle these dudes. And we've seen it all the way back in, you know, the Android Saga and, you know, the Cell Saga. We've seen these androids can be built to be quite powerful. And Hiro is supposed to be str uh, more intelligent than even, uh, you know, Dr. Jiro. So I guess it can make more of a sense. But yeah, the only the only logical explanation I can have is the gun was made the same way as they are, just like how you know Android's uh, 17, and 18's attacks uh, actually hurt you know the, the Z fighters in the Android saga because whatever you know energy system they're equipped with by Doctor Shiro hat can produce that level of power. So I guess you can say the same for the gun, but it still seems ridiculous. You might as well just have them firing out the energy from their body instead of a gun. It just doesn't make too much sense to uh, have it through that way. But going back to, you know, why I don't think Gamma 1 and 2 are on Goku and Vegeta's level, even in the Tournament of Power, is because when you look at what they were doing, they were nowhere near that powerful. When Gohan first comes and goes to Super Saiyan 2 and fights Gamma 1, Gamma 1 is able to give him the business and handle him, but if he was that much more powerful and aiming to take him out, he should have been able to easily take out uh, Gohan and Super Saiyan 2 alone. And when he went Mystic form, Gohan actually was able to, you know, get the advantage and push him back and actually beat uh, beat on, uh, what's it called, Gamma 1 and push him back. So if they were that significantly powerful, then how would Gohan transforming to his Mystic form be able to, you know, be able to overpower him and his Super Saiyan 2 form be able to at least compete against him. That doesn't make any sense. And we know that when characters do not train, they get weaker. And from what was stated by Piccolo, Gohan definitely did not train. And since there's been a time skip, because now Pan is three and a half years old, there has to be at least a couple of years that have passed since, you know, um, the end of Dragon Ball Super to this movie. So meaning for years, Gohan did not train for consistently which would mean he would get weaker, yet even with him getting weaker in Super Saiyan 2, he's still able to handle, you know, uh, Gamma 1 fairly. And uh, Mystic Form, even though I wouldn't say he was completely overpowering, because he does state that he made him use up, uh, you know, a bit of his energy, he had 82% left, uh, he was still able to ha be more powerful than him and dog him. So if they were that much more powerful, then one, Piccolo would have been easily killed by Gamma 2 when he first met him, 
2, Gohan should not be able to, you know, handle him at all in Super Saiyan 2. And, Super Saiyan, and you know, his missile form should also not be able to handle him, uh, especially with how weak he got. So that didn't really make much sense. So I don't really agree with, you know, them being that powerful. Uh, because from what we see Feast alone, they don't show anything on that level of power. I just think this is either bad writing or, uh, you know, simply... Gohan and Piccolo not knowing what the hell they're talking about because they can't sense uh, Goku and Vegeta's godly power one and two they haven't seen Goku and Vegeta fight uh, for quite a while so they don't know how powerful they really are um, also I will point out another one that wow uh, that will uh, you know kind of fit with my statement of the power scale doesn't make sense but I still want to go on the gammas because then we have Piccolo and Piccolo is able to handle uh, Gamma 2 uh, Gamma 2 this time better because he unlocked his potential with uh, you know Shenron but the thing was Shenron said you only get a bit of your power uh, unlocked a bit of, of more power because you didn't have much more to unlock so you only gain a bit more power but yet that was able to enough for him to throw a hand with him. Yes, did he get forced into his big, you know, or orange piccolo form, which he was easily bodying him, but even so, he only got a bit stronger from what it was stated by, you know, uh, you know, Shenron, yet he was able to easily completely handle them. Either meaning that they're not that powerful because of the bit of power, or that line about him getting only a bit stronger is complete bullshit because to go from that level to that over, you know, stating that they're that powerful, he would not be he would not be able to handle it if he only got a bit powerful. He would have to get significantly more powerful to do something like that. So that's also why I don't agree with that. Now the thing that I want to talk about that I was mentioning, why the power scaling does not make sense, uh, or the logic and the writing didn't make too much sense, was the fact that when you know Piccolo went to uh, Pan's uh, preschool to get uh, you know pretend kidnap her. She was able to tell that it was Piccolo by sensing his energy, and she's like, "Hey, you're Pic hey Piccolo," and he's like, "Oh, you can you can tell who I am." She's like, "Yeah, I can sense your energy." And remember, she's only three and a half, and she has good enough uh, energy sensing to be able to be perceptive enough to tell that this is Piccolo and not some random guy trying to hurt her. But Gohan, when he went up to him, dressed up in his uh, you know his uniform. Gohan didn't know who he was. He was like, who are you? And when he was in the, you know, the uh, HQ of r the Red Ribbon Army, um, he was, you know, holding Pan up to pretend threaten her. And Go Gohan thought it was legit the case. He only realized it was Piccolo once when he revealed himself. And Piccolo just mentioned this saying, Gohan can't uh, tell who I am. And this is to indicate, well, he's lacking training and stuff like that. But even so, without the training, he could still go Super Saiyan 2 and Mystic, yet he cannot sense energy. I'm sorry, but that makes no sense. How can he, How can his three-and-a-half-year-old daughter know how to sense energy, but go on who's trained continuously, even though he's not training now? That doesn't mean he can lose the sense of, you know, uh, sensing somebody's energy, somebody like, especially somebody like Piccolo's. It doesn't make sense that he would, you know, fail to be able to sense his. And on top of it, if he can go Super Saiyan 2 and still Mystic, how can he not sense energy still correctly? That makes no sense. So that's inconsistent. And yeah, that's one of the reasons why I don't take the statements too literal, like him saying Gamma 1 and 2, or this powerful, or, you know, Cell Max is that powerful, because of the, if you're telling me that he cannot sense Piccolo's power, but Pan can't, and Pip, uh, he can go Super Saiyan 2 and, you know, Mystic, but also can't still sense his power and who he is, it, it doesn't make sense. So there's my argument for that. Um, but then we have, you know, uh, Cell Max breaking out, and then we get the fight against Cell Max. And this is where the power scaling gets more ridiculous because people are saying that uh, Cell Max would be able to handle Ultra Instinct, uh, you know, uh, Goku and Vegeta all the way back in, you know, uh, Torment of Power. And maybe even possibly beyond that because Goku, uh, Piccolo, or I think it was Gohan, he stated, he's like, I wish my uh, Goku and Vegeta were here. But then he's like, but even if they were here, they probably wouldn't be able to beat him. And I disagree with that statement 100%, and I'll prove to you why. A couple reasons. One, the reason why Cell Max I do not think is that powerful is from what we've seen him in the movie, what he, what he was doing. One, he got severely damaged and lost an arm due to uh, Gamma, uh, it was Gamma 2 uh, completely using up his energy, flying down at him and punching his forearm while he was holding it up, destroying his forearm which ended up killing him, but it also hurt, uh, you know, Cell Max. Now, if Cell Max was that powerful and Goku and Vegeta wouldn't be uh, alone, wouldn't be able to handle him, then how did Gamma 1 uh, severely damage him? Even though he gave up his life, how did he severely damage him? Some of you guys might say, well, 
They stated he was this powerful, but I already talked about why I disagreed with it and showed case why it doesn't make sense that they would be that powerful, seeing as how they're targeted and trying to kill Go Gohan and Piccolo, but couldn't, even though Gohan and Piccolo are significantly weaker than Goku and Vegeta. So of a guy who is significantly weaker and, you know, doesn't make sense at that level, you know, consistency wise, if he was to use up all of his power and hurt him, then maybe he's not there uh, uh, as strong as Goku and Vegeta because, like I said, he, from what we've seen from feats alone, not statements, but feats, he is not stronger than, uh, they should not be stronger than, uh, you know, um, Mr. Gohan and a Piccolo with a bit of a power boost from the Dragon Balls, which would be significantly weaker than Goku and Vegeta. And if they were able to hurt him, then that means that, uh, you know, Cell Max is significantly weak, uh, weaker than Goku and Vegeta too. So that's where my argument comes from there. But then there's even more because Bulma brings in Android 18, Go, uh, Krillin, Trunks, and uh, Goten. And Trunks and Goten do a fusion. They fail to get their fat form. And uh, Krillin and uh, uh, 18 jump into the mix. Now, it's basically a battle between uh, Krillin, uh, Android 18, uh, fat Gotenks, uh, Gohan, and Piccolo. And guess what? Cell Max is able to fend them off very well and hurt them pretty well, but he's also still getting hurt. He's getting hurt and they're able to push him back. I also forgot Gamma uh, 1 does something. Gamma 2 does a little bit of the beginning, but you know, he goes uh, outshine later on. But yeah, later on, uh, what I'm trying to say is they all fight him and guess what? Not It's not like Piccolo and Gohan were the only ones do dealing the damage to him or Gamma uh, 1. It was also Krillin and 18, and even uh, fat Gotenks, which if you look at the power scale in that, it does not make sense that they were able to not only knock him off of balance, but also even hurt him a little. Not enough to you know severely hurt him, but hurt him enough where it stops him. If he's that powerful, Krillin, 18, and uh, fat Gotenks' uh, attacks should have had no effect on him. Hell, even Mr. Gohan's attack should have had no effect on him, because he should be stronger than, you know, Master Ultra Instant Goku and stuff, and Super Saiyan Blue evolved Vegeta and possibly even stronger versions of them. If he was that powerful, these guys shouldn't have been able to hurt him. The only person that should have been able to do any damage to him would have been, you know, um, Orange Piccolo. But these guys were able to hurt, hurt him and stuff. And we even see later on, uh, Fat uh, Fat Gotenks falling down. Uh, he tries to do a move, he gets hit. They all start hitting him and smack him down until he smacks into, uh, you know, Cell Max's head, which cracks it and basically almost destroys it completely, but it, it damages him severely. So if he was that much more powerful, then how can, you know, uh, somebody as weak as Fat Gotenks fall down on his head and severely damage him and nearly destroy him? How would that be possible? He had that much strength to generate. Maybe he's not as powerful as, you know, as suggested by, you know, Gohan. Maybe Gohan made a stupid statement, which I will get into because Dragon Ball Super has a lot of these dumb statements that don't make any sense anyway. And a lot of times they're just contradictory. So I'll go into that. But yeah, they were able to handle them. Now, some of you guys might say, well, they were just being a little bit of distraction like a fly. They possibly didn't hurt him, but they were knocking him back and hurting, uh, you know, doing some damage. Obviously, they weren't significantly hurting him, but they were able to move him and stuff. If they were that powerful, the only way they could, you know, damage him would have been through, you know, uh, Beast Gohan and Orange Piccolo, but they weren't the only ones doing the work. Those other guys were too. And for argument of sake, if you want to argue, let's say that it was just like a little fly thing, well, then how do you uh, defend this? Because Cell Max was swinging around and he was throwing shots. And remember, Cell Max is a monster. He's not like the regular Cell where he has a conscious. He has no conscious. He's just a monster. So he would definitely not be holding back. And as he's not holding back, he's throwing swings. He's hitting Gohan and Piccolo and hurting them. Sorry for that. Somebody's coming in through the garage. But he's hurting them, right? He's hurting them. But he's also hitting Goten with uh, He's hitting Gotenks with it. Uh, Trunks. I mean, not Trunks. Krillin and Android 18. Guess what? Android 18, Krillin, and Gotenks, even though they are getting hurt significantly, they're able to survive it. If he was this powerful, and like I said, the thing about him is, since he's a monster type of character, and unlike Cell, he doesn't have conscious, there's no reason for him to hold back, and he definitely wasn't holding back. He was trying to destroy them. So meaning every time he was throwing a punch or sh shooting a blast, it was him sh uh, throwing a punch and a blast that was not, you know, uh, controlled. It was him going off trying to take them out. Yet, Krillin, 18, and Fat uh, Gotenks were able to tank those attacks 
without dying. Yes, towards the ending, they did all get knocked out from the attack, but still, it didn't kill them. They took a giant blast and still survived. It's just that they were, you know, uh, incapacitated at that moment. But yeah, if he was that powerful, uh, uh, with one swing, he should have been able to obliterate and splatter them. We saw what happened with uh, Goku. When he wasn't holding back a little bit, in the beginning of, you know, Super punched Krillin so hard, he sent him flying, busted up his face. If he was that powerful, they were able to take multiple hits and still come back. If he was that powerful, he would have been able to kill them with just a swing. So yeah, that's why I don't really uh, believe it. And, um, you know, Gohan saying that stuff about, oh, uh, you, you, what's the thing called? Um, even, I think even if Vegeta and him came, I was like, shut up, you sound stupid. And the reason why, uh, you know, I say that Dragon Ball Super does not have good, a lot of times they write dialogue that doesn't make sense. We saw this all the way back in, uh, you know, uh, Battle of Gods, where Beer said, you made me use 10% of my powers to, uh, 10% of my power to Vegeta, which wasn't true at all, because we've seen, no matter how strong Vegeta and Goku have gotten, Beerus is still above them, so, if he was able to pull out, pull out like, 10% of his power in an enraged Super Saiyan 2 form all the way back then, then at this point he should be far past him, but he's not. And we also had, uh, him stating that Super Saiyan Goku only got, a, was only a bit stronger than Free, Final Form Frieza, which obviously wasn't true, base Goku should be able to one-shot him. So, yeah, there's a lot of consistency throughout Dragon Ball Super itself when it comes to this power scaling and the statements itself. So I wouldn't take the statements too literal. I would say, oh, what I'm saying is, take the feats more literal, uh, take the more, uh, feats more with consideration than the statements. Because the statements are not very consistent. Neither are the feats a lot of times, but especially the statements. And when you look at the feats or what we're showing in this movie, he none nothing suggested through just pure non dialogue, not using dialogue, just through feet wise that Gamma One and Two were anywhere near Goku and Vegeta's level, and that Cell Max was stronger than them either. So yeah, I don't agree with that uh, statement. <coughs> and this is important because people are saying that well, if Beast Gohan can handle him. He takes a punch and can kill him. That means that Beast Gohan is stronger than them, or at least on their level. Uh, no, the reason, like I said, he's not is because one. He was getting, uh, Cell Max was getting affected by attacks from characters far weaker than him, and they were able to tank attacks, uh, th these, you know, characters that are significantly weaker were able to tank attacks from him not holding back, hitting them. So yeah, if they can tank that, then that means he's not that powerful. So, which in turn would mean that Beast Gohan and Orange Piccolo are also not that powerful. I do not agree that uh, Beast Piccolo, uh, Beast, <laughs> Beast Gohan and Orange Piccolo are anywhere near on the level of Goku and Vegeta at this point. They might be later on when they stay, uh, like, you know, show them, but for right now, it just seems like they, they got incorrect statements and the statements are just being ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, I think I have one more uh, example of, you know, bad writing. It wasn't too much with power scaling, but just bad consistency. And that was when uh, Vegeta was training and he was meditating and Goku goes up to him and says, like, why the hell are you uh, meditating? What are you doing that for? He's like, I'm training, and he's like, that's not training, you're just meditating, which is stupid because Goku's meditated before, Piccolo meditates. We know in Dragon Ball that meditating works as training, Goku knows it, they just dumbed him down for some reason, but yeah, he, he knows the importance of, you know, mental fortitude in your training and stuff, and how your mind can uh, also matters, because he was, he was talking shit to um, Ginyu when Ginyu took over his body, he said, he said, your, your mind and your, uh, your mind does not match your body, telling him that your mind is just important as the body, which, you know, clearly contradicts the, him acting this way. And the reason why I'm mentioning this, besides the whole stupidity of Goku and him saying, why are you doing this and stuff, was a unique statement from uh, uh, Vegeta. He stated that, he was talking about Jiren, he said, this is what Jiren did to get powerful, and then he told Goku that, why do you think Jiren beat us? It wasn't because Jiren was stronger than us. His, he was physically not stronger than us. Physically, he was the same. But the reason he was stronger than us was because he had better control of his power. And when he would go in for attack, that's when he would launch out his more, most powerful attack, which they don't really do that anyway, which showcases the bad writing here. But he stated that uh, Jiren wasn't physically stronger than Goku and Vegeta. He was just able to control his power better. Which is complete bullshit because if you see throughout the Tormentor of Power, even when Goku was hitting him and stuff and not using that explosive stuff, guess what? Goku was, you know, transitioned from all these other forms and still not, not able to hurt him. He didn't hurt him in Super Saiyan God. He didn't hurt him in Super Saiyan Blue. He didn't hurt him in Super Saiyan Blue Kai Ken times 20. And he wasn't even able to take him out with his uh, Spirit Bomb in Super Saiyan Blue Kai Ken uh, times 20. Jiren was able to push back with his eyes. So he was significantly stronger than them. And 
he was able to tank, you know, uh, what's his name called? Uh, hits, you know, invisible key thing that killed Goku earlier. He used it on Jiren, and guess what? It did nothing to Jiren. So yeah, I do not agree with that statement. I think that is incorrect. Stating that Jiren did not have, was not more powerful than them. He just was able to control his power better. Stupid uh, logic. That's incorrect. Jiren was significantly stronger than them. If it wasn't, then Goku wouldn't need to be going through those multiple forms and stuff and multiplying his powers. And we know that, uh, you know, Ultra Instinct Omen and Master Ultra Instinct does multiply, you know, make him stronger and faster and more durable. So why would he have that of, you know, if they were still on the same level? That's just dumb. That's incorrect. Uh, one Another reason that proves to me that the dialogue in this movie is very... Like I said, I love the movie. I think it's a great movie. I think it's fun. I enjoyed it more than Broly and Res Resurrection of F. I think it has less of a, you know, power scaling problem or ridiculous the power scaling than them. But it still has bad uh, power scaling, especially with this dialogue. The dialogue was some of the worst... Uh, they made some of the worst statements when it came to power scaling. Uh, especially this one. Saying Jiren had, was not stronger than them, just that. That just proves to me why you shouldn't take the statements too literal. Like the statements about Gamma, the Gammas, or the statements about Cell Max, or the statement by, uh, about, you know, Jiren's power. I don't agree with it because it's not very consistent. And when you look at it logically, it doesn't make much sense. Also, I do want to talk about um, the interview that came out from the writer of the movie and stuff. Because Chuck did talk about stating that even, uh, we don't even know Broly can beat him. Bro, he's stronger than Broly and stuff like that. Once again, some people might say, well, see, there you have it. There's proof. He stated that Cell Max is stronger than Broly, which is definitely, you know, this level and stuff, which would all especially be stronger than, you know, Goku and Vegeta and the, their tournament of power counterpart uh, power, right? But the problem with that is writers for these movies, a lot of times they make these over-exaggerated statements. We heard this uh, from, you know, the guy who created Broly, and I'm talking about the original Broly. He's talking about the original Broly being the strongest uh, character in all of Dragon Ball, and then stating that he was also stronger than Beerus, which is complete bold-faced lie. He was nowhere near that powerful. A lot of times these writers can make these over-exaggerated statements, and that's why you have to take uh, a lot of these statements either from you know the show or the source material or from these writers with a grain of salt because a lot of times they don't make much sense and they just say things just, just to say it. And when you look at the consistency, which is what was shown in the movie, there's nothing to su suggest that that was the case. The dialogue might have suggested it, but what we were seeing was nowhere near on that level. And I think I've disproven this, uh, you know, these these ridiculous uh, claims quite a bit in this video. So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, I wanted to make this video badly after I watched Chuck's video. No offense to Chuck once again. I'm not saying Chuck is, you know, wrong, but. I think he should have done more in-depth research. Instead of just going by statements, he should have looked more at what was shown in the movie because from what was shown in the movie, it didn't make much sense. And like I said, I needed to watch the movie first before I judged it because I want to see. And the dialogue he was right about, but from what we saw, it didn't really equate the same. So yeah, I disagree. I don't think Cell is anywhere near that, Cell Max is anywhere near that powerful or Gamma 1 and 2. And I don't think he's, uh, you know, multiversal. So I would not put him on that level of power, but from what we've been, uh, you know, shown. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, stay tuned for next time.